More deals, I hear you say. Well, the good thing is the PlayStation Store January sale has plenty more deals. In this video here, we're gonna be exploring the $20 deals. So these are a little bit more pricey than some of the other videos, but if you're on a budget, you know, the cheaper games, I have a video about $10 deals, $5 deals, $3 deals, uh, and also a video about $15 deals coming out and some hidden gems coming out over the next couple of days as well. This video here is going to focus specifically on $20 deals. Let's dive in and take a look at the games. Hey, if you're a new viewer of the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I make new videos like this every single day on the channel, looking the latest from PlayStation. Today, we are taking a look at the PlayStation Store Summer Sale, and I'm going to be recommending 12 games that you can pick up for under $20. These are in the $20-ish price tier on the PlayStation Store Summer Sale. If you're looking for cheaper deals, cheaper games than 20 bucks, uh, there is other videos on the channel that you can check out, as I mentioned in the intro. Now, let's get on with the first game. Game number one is Doom Eternal. This game came out in 2020, so it's so it's pretty amazing that this went from 60 all the way down to 20 bucks in less than 12 months. Doom Eternal is the spiritual successor or sequel to Doom 2016. Really, all you need to know about this franchise is that it has fantastic shooting and, and movement mechanics. The way that you move your character and the fluidity in the shooting and movement is really what makes this game different to other first person shooter games. Doom being a really old franchise which has recently come back from the dead in the past generation with a number of these essentially reboots to the franchise in 2016 and Eternal. Now Eternal wasn't received quite as highly as Doom 2016 but I think that was just because there was a lot of stuff happening in 2020 which we're not going to talk about as well as a lot of games that came out around the same time. Next up we have Dark Souls 1 Remastered. Now this is the remade remastered version of the original Dark Souls game. Dark Souls being the PlayStation 3 360 classic. Now this one here took everything from their game and rebuilt it and remastered it it's not a full remake like the new demon souls game which kind of redid everything this one here just up everything and enhanced and improved things to make it work on the current generation platforms dark souls I i'm sure everyone's familiar with what this is at this point slow methodical gameplay it's got punishing enemies and boss battles. It focuses really heavily on boss fights and that combat system, but it's that kind of risk reward and teaching the player without telling. That's kind of what makes this game's franchise special. The thing I love about Dark Souls is that you can die and die and die and die, and then it will click and you'll understand what you're doing wrong, and then you'll know exactly what to do to take down the enemy. And that's what makes this franchise special. It's really teaching the player without explaining it. And it's, it's quite an awesome aha moment when you actually figure it out and realize that's what I need to be doing here, not this. And uh, and yeah, so Dark Souls is cheap if you want to pick up that. Resident Evil 3, another game that went from 60 bucks down to less than 20 in less than 12 months. Resident Evil 3 came out in 2020 as well. Resident Evil 3 is actually a remake of the original. It's not isometric, it's third person. You play as Jill Valentine as you explore the city of Raccoon City after it's been taken over by zombies. Now, Resident Evil has this kind of long convoluted history, but the good thing about these ones is that you can go back and play some of these original games to understand what actually happened in this franchise, getting it to the point of Resident Evil. I guess 7 or 8 coming out in 2021. This game here's quirk is this thing called Nemesis and he is the main enemy in the game that kind of follows you around and there's always kind of this overwhelming presence throughout the game. He's really creepy, he's really spooky, very similar to Mr. X in Resident Evil 2, which we will talk about later in this video as well, but a really solid third person horror action adventure game if you're into that. A really new game on the list is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. This is a remastered version of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit from PS3 and 360 again, but this one only came out about four weeks ago on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. This is actually the Criterion developed game. These are the guys that worked on Burnout. So if you're into really the arcadey style of Need for Speed, really arcadey style, then this game is perfect for that. It really does scratch a little bit of that Burnout itch that a lot of people had with the lack of any Burnout games post Burnout Paradise. Now it's not exactly Burnout. It doesn't do everything that Burnout does, but it's the closest Need for Speed has ever gotten to crossing over with that franchise. And it's developed by the same guys that made it. So if you're after something like that, 
this is a great one to dive into on the PlayStation 4. It's also a really new game that's been heavily discounted only four weeks after release, maybe because it didn't sell particularly well. Either way, it's great for the gamers because we get to pick up a cheap brand new game. This is a cult classic and something people ask me about every single time I make a sale of videos. Nier Automata, uh, this is the game of the year edition or the game of the your heart edition. Nier is a really, it's a really strange game to describe. It, in its essence, it's a third person action game. Very similarly to Devil May Cry, I think that, that, that has similar elements as that game, but is very different still. Kind of fits somewhere in this line of like a, a, a JRPG and a Japanese action game. Not that there's a ton of Japanese action games, so it kind of does sit in a world of its own. The game itself uses a ton of different viewpoints going from a third person viewpoint to a fixed camera viewpoint. It does a bunch of really crazy stuff. I'm not even gonna begin to explain the narrative in this game because I don't think I can do it justice in the time allotted to this game. Great game though, really, really solid gameplay, but it does take some time to get into it. I'd say if you pick this one up for 20 bucks, you're getting a great deal, but you gotta stick with it for a little while. I think you gotta push through that opening sequence, maybe about one or two hours into the game when it starts really clicking with you and you start realizing just how clever this game is then I think you're gonna really enjoy it. That's when I think that moment will kick in. You'll be like, ah, now I understand what Josh was talking about. Remnant from the Ashes. Now this one is a little bit expensive. This is 20 bucks. It's 50% off at the moment. Remnant is one of these weird double A third person games that has come around and it's a game I'm a massive fan of, but it's a game that probably not a lot of people have heard of. It's weird because it is on a budget and it is doing things cheap, but the game is really, really fun. It melds this sci-fi and fantasy thing, which not a ton of games do, and the games that do it don't do it very well. This game does it well, so it has a combination of third-person shooting mechanics as well as sort of Dark Souls combat mechanics, and that's kind of interesting. It's it's a it's a really unique way of, of presenting a game like this. I think this one is worth checking out, and it's kind of one of these hidden gems, I would say. It's one of the games that is not super popular and not super well-known, but it's always on sale and has really cool artwork. Devil May Cry 5, this is the third person Japanese action game I was talking about. Devil May Cry 5 being the culmination, I guess, or the, the game all the Devil May Cry games have led up to to this point. You get to play as three different protagonists in this game, not just Dante from the original trilogy, but it's a really solid third person action game. I, I think one of the best gameplay and the, the most satisfying combat in any third person action game. The game is super stylish. The game is super colorful. Colorful. And because you get to play as three different characters, you get quite uniquely different combat styles, which also keeps the game really engaging and fun. A Hat in Time. This one is $20.99. I know it's 99 cents over, but it's a really cool platformer game. Now, this is an indie game. It's not a AAA game, but it kind of did reach that status of AAA when it did release because it's, it's, it's one of these things that I don't think a lot of people knew exactly what it was, but it did seem to get super popular with games media when it came out. Essentially, if you enjoy, I, I guess, comparing it to a Banjo-Kazooie style third-person platformer or third-person mascot platformer game, that's probably the most fair way, or Mario 64. I, I think that's the vibe it's going for in terms of, in terms of the kind of platformer it is. I really do love mascot platformer games. I think there's not enough of them on our current consoles. Although we are getting a bunch of them now that Crash is kind of back. This is one of those kind of games. If you're into them, you're gonna enjoy this. Absolutely check it out. Trover Saves the Universe. Now this is the Justin Roiland, Rick and Morty sort of VR game that's in VR, but also not in VR. It's a third person game at heart. You, you play as a guy in a chair holding a controller. So you're viewing it from a first person perspective, but you are a player viewing it in a first person perspective. It's, it's, it's Rick and Morty, so it gets kind of meta. But you control this character named Trover, who is on a quest to save the universe. He has these things in his eyes, which have eyes. It's it's super weird, as you would expect from a Rick and Morty game. But if you enjoy that kind of humor, then you're gonna like this game. The humor alone is what carries it. The gameplay actually isn't too bad as well for a third person hack and slash sort of game with, with puzzles and things in it. Uh, but if you don't enjoy Rick and Morty and you think the jokes kind of miss more than they hit, then probably stay away from this one because that's really does is what carries this game through to its completion. Concrete Genie is another, it's, it's, I would say it's a double A game that kind of went under the radar when Sony launched it. it. It sort of didn't get the press it probably deserved. This one's $14.99. The game itself is, is interesting because it's split into two sort of separate games. It's a third person action game, but then it's also like a third person creation game as well. It has these two sides to it. You play as this character who is dealing with 
bullying and it has a bunch of sort of really standard kind of semi open world action mechanics but then as the game progresses it changes itself very dramatically to add this sort of creative tool to it as well and the entire game kind of changes in the second half now that is neither i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing uh but it's what happens the game itself is is pretty decent though i would say as a third person action game and it did get pretty decent praise when it launched but i think it kind of came out at the same time as a lot of ps5 news and things like that and just sort of died in the press circuit at the time beyond blue is a game that came out in 2020 this one is 15 dollars 99 it's it's really a nature documentary the game it's made actually by the bbc and uh, in conjunction with i, I think planet earth which is the David Attenborough documentary. Play as a diver and you have to investigate and research a bunch of marine wildlife. It's a little bit slower and a little bit more of a chilled out game if you're into something like that. If you're into a more fast paced run and gun, smash and bash style game, this isn't it. This is more of a chilled out, laid back experience. You can learn some things, you can look at the environment, you can check out some whales and things like that uh, if you're into something more chill. And the last game is Resident Evil 2. This is $15.99, strangely fitting into the same list as Resident Evil 3. This one here obviously comes before RE3 and, and it kind of sets up the scene for Resident Evil 3 with the uh, the police station or the Raccoon Police Station. You play as Leon Kennedy, one of the most famous protagonists in the Resident Evil franchise. And uh, yeah, you kind of, the, the two and three games kind of do cross over because you see Leon uh, across both of these games and uh, and it's kind of throwbacks to each of them as well. RE2 is a full remake, same as RE3 is, with uh, all of the assets and textures being redone and done up for this game uh, versus that original isometric style. This one here is really good. I actually enjoyed RE2 a lot more than RE3 personally, uh, but I know a lot of people have differed on that and they prefer 3 over 2 and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So it really depends on your personal preference and what kind of protagonist you're playing as, what kind of environments you enjoy. Really fun action sort of horror game. I put horror in quotation marks because I didn't find it very scary, but I know some people did. And uh, and yeah, worth checking out. And there you have it, guys. That is 12 games on the PlayStation Store January sale that are under 20 bucks. Let me know if you're going to be checking out any of these 12 games and if you enjoyed any of these recommendations or maybe some of the other videos I've made. If you're wanting to look at $10 games, $5 games, check those out in the link in the description down below. I have some other awesome deal videos over there as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video very much, just give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully if you're new, I've convinced you to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.